Ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another podcast on Super Negotiate. My name is Gaurav, and I talk about procurement, spend analysis, and negotiations. In today's episode, however, I will be talking about five procurement frauds that you need to go out and start catching from tomorrow onwards. The first type of fraud is about the fake vendors and fake employees. Fake employees? Yes. It's becoming more and more common, especially in the organizations which are growing larger and larger day by day, and it's becoming extremely complex to analyze the data. The one way to catch fake vendors is depending upon their business activity. What do you need to do is go tomorrow and for the last two or three years, see amount of POs for each of your vendor, how recent those POs were, against those POs, just look out the remittances. Now, you're looking for a pattern where either there are no POs but payments or the duration between POs and payments is really, really small. After you analyze that subset, try to identify who's dealing with those vendors in your organization. A good chance is the people who are dealing with such fraud or fake vendors will happen to only be handful. The more stakeholder engagements a vendor has in an organization, the lesser is the chance that vendor being a fake vendor. Similarly, I talked about the fake or ghost employees. It's very odd, but I have seen organizations where due to high number of employees, payroll fraud has also become one of the major area of the risk. How do you identify fake employees? Again, look for the connectivity nodes similar to the fake vendor. Who else is talking to that employee? Also, it happens to see all of these fake employees could be above the retirement age and that's really a good place to start. So check out what's the policy of your organization as far as the retirement age is concerned and look for any employee who is currently on the payroll but above the retirement age and that's a really good way to start with. Second type of fraud is a fascinating and really easy one to catch. And it's where you have made the advance payment, but you have not received the goods. And that's typically very common in services vendors or even in the hardware vendors. So how do you want to catch this? All you're looking for is POs raised, but you have not done your good receipt or GRN note as you might call it it becomes even more severe when it is above a certain threshold of the time duration. What do I mean by that? You're looking for transaction where the delivery was supposed to be given in let's say two months, but it has been a year or eight months or nine months, but you have not received the goods so far. Once you analyze this behavior, see how common a vendor is or whether there's only subset of few vendors who have large delivery rates pending. Um, as I said in the beginning, it becomes even worse when you have uh, advance payment made to such vendors. I would start immediately these data analysis to analyze this type of fraud. The third type of fraud is actually a bit difficult to catch, but with advanced data analytics, you can get started. And that is about inflated prices. Now, why I say it's difficult to catch because there could be some very legitimate reasons, but when you apply factors of who is getting these price increases at what point of time and whether those price increases are in line with what other vendors have received or even as per the market trends, the pattern becomes to emerge. So how do you want to start with this? If I were the category manager, I would list out my year-on-year price increase and I would see from the unit price perspective what's the average price increase for a particular product. How many vendors do I have and what is the unit price increase I have received from each of the vendor. Okay. 
and if there is one vendor who has been receiving the price increases unfavorably i think a pattern can emerge you would see that particular vendor will always be an outlier as far as the price cost increase is concerned another way to attempt uh, to fa catch such outliers is look in terms of the unit price index increase like we just discussed and also combine it with the increase in the business of the quantity that particular vendor is getting an example could be if i'm a vendor who is 20 percent higher than the average unit price of a particular product and i'm getting 60 percent of the share i think it's a really good way to catch one of the outlier the next step would always be to evaluate the actual on ground situation with the help of the category manager the fourth type of fraud is called bid rigging now for you who are just starting up in the procurement bid means different suppliers coming on your requirement and placing their prices now bid rigging is again a sophisticated kind of a fraud and if someone has to analyze it they have to look at the broader picture rather than a transaction now bid rigging has few more components sub components inside it the first one could be just check who are your approved suppliers for the product that you are going to bid and whether there has been some sort of a award that has been shifting now what do i mean by that is it possible that some of your suppliers are taking turns to win the award that means supplier a wins at this time supplier b for the next time supplier c probably one or two years before now this can get you started but it largely be an inconclusive one but to make yourself a bit more comfortable to analyze this add one more layer of sophistication to see if you are unable to catch this turn by turn award strategy whether they are dividing the geographical regions for example one supply could be very competitive in one geography but it's always extremely expensive in some of the other geographies for your bidding and when you combine everything together draw a venn diagram very simple to really see when they are com getting competitive what's the rate of competition coming down competitiveness meaning how cheaper they get and you would see that if this is a market a and this is a market b and our supplier is becoming really competitive here his competitiveness will try to fall down becoming it becomes more expensive as he reaches geography b and similarly the other supplier could be it's become really expensive here but his competitiveness increases as he reaches geography b you combine this using python or r and develop some nodes according to the competitiveness and you would see a cluster being formed in terms of the extremely cheaper or competitive prices will end up at the borders and the expensive ones would always emerge in the middle one i'll try to draw a diagram for you to analyze but this is again one of the way to really ask your suppliers what exactly is going on the third way to catch the bid rigging is a bit more technical and i haven't seen many e-sourcing providers offering this solution they could be bidding from the same or similar a uh, place uh, the best way to catch them is using the ip address and even the addresses from which they were the, they are the bidding um, they are actually bidding but i haven't seen anyone offering this solution yet so probably we will park this one for me the first two methods have worked really well and i have been able to catch two or three cases where it becomes really evident that the suppliers are actually colluding the fourth variation in the bid rigging is actually where all the suppliers come together and they push or the pull their weight fast enough to make sure only one supplier becomes the winner what do i mean by that is let's say if there are four suppliers three suppliers will bid extremely high 
and the fourth supplier will become extremely low to become an eventual winner. After that supplier is awarded the bid, then either that supplier will pay some of the portion to the three suppliers or the next time that supplier will now become the most expensive supplier and some other supplier can come out on the top. The last type of fraud is called over purchasing fraud. In many big organization, the people who are managing the inventory and people who are doing the purchasing are actually two different functions and that's exactly what the fraudster would like to capitalize on. Now what do I mean by that is if the category manager is just relying upon the requirements of the purchase requisition and he purchases that without even looking at the inventory, the fraudster would like to always buy more inventory than what it is needed from the favorite vendor. This particular fraud is largely in happening in the cases of indirect off the shelf commodities where you have only single source supplier situation also quite predominant. The way to catch this fraud is always have a look in terms of your minimum inventory days and also have a look of your slow moving and non moving inventory. And this is how you can keep over purchasing in check. Now these are the five really simple frauds that you can start tracking from tomorrow onwards and have some of peace that you need in this moment. My name is Gaurav and if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and share this video with your colleagues. I'll see you in the next one.